Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the, for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manuals for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we're going to solve today are the ones that you will find on page number 62. Please start doing page number 62 and today is our lesson number 10. Today we'll deal with the notion of rational versus irrational numbers. So let's first talk about what makes what makes a number rational. A rational number a rational number is any number that can be that can be written as a fraction. If you can write it as a fraction, then that's a rational number. For example, 3 a is a rational number. 3 quarter is a rational number. Any number that you can write that as a fraction is a rational number. And you will see in a second that not all numbers can be written as a fraction. Believe it or not, there are some numbers that simply cannot be written as fractions. They are irrational. We'll come to that. We'll come to those in a second. They are rational numbers. Let's first talk about, let's first understand the rational numbers. Another way to look at the rational number is that rational numbers are, a rational number is any number that can be written as, that can be written as a terminating 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 decimal for example the reason why 3 8 is a rational number is because 3 8 can be written as 0 0.375 0.375 and that's it, it ends there. The reason why 3 quadrant is a rational number is because it can be written as 0 0.75 and that's it, it ends there. So, alright, one more time. You can recapitulate what we have done so far. What we said is that a rational number is a, is a number that can be written either as a fraction or you, it, it is something that can be written as a terminating decimal point, which, of which, which these two are one and same thing. If it can be written as a terminating decimal point, then it can be written as a fraction. Or, another way to look at a rational number is that it's a number that has a Repeating decimals. Repeating decimal pattern. So here, here we're going to come across numbers that can be written as a fractions, but they never end. See, one third. One third, of course, is written as a fraction, as you can see here. But if you write it in decimal, it's never going to end. It never ends. It's just point three repeating. That's just how we show repeating. It's point three repeating. It's point three, 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 three. So, forever and ever. Amen. Until the cows come home. This is also a rational number. It's a rational number because it can be written as a fraction. So, as long as it's a repeating pattern of decimals, the decimal does not actually have to end. This part, it says terminating decimal. That's the, the, uh, if it is terminating, that it is. If it is, it, if it if it has a terminating decimal, then it is a rational number. But just because it does not have a terminating decimal does not mean that it's not necessarily not rational. I don't know what I just said. I can't, I can't remember how I began my sentence. For example, here, 
it does not end. But it is rational because even though it does not end, it goes on forever and ever. There's a pattern. The pattern is very straightforward. It's just three. That's all. Let's look at some other patterns here. For example, seven ninth. Seven ninth is a rational number for one very simple reason. And one very simple reason is that, as you can see, it is seven nine. It's written as a fraction. If you can write it as a fraction, then the bloody thing is rational. It has decimal points that's going to go on forever, but it's going to have a pattern. It's going to look like this. 0.7 forever and ever. 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, forever and ever. And that's how we write it. Let's look at one more example. 6, 11 is another example. It's a rational number because we, are, we just wrote it as a fraction, but it goes on forever and ever. It's just going to be 0 0.54, 54, 54, so on and so forth. And how do we write this thing? We write this as 0.54 repeating. Let's do one more. Let's do 6. I don't know why I have 6 over 11 and 7 over 11 as, as, as examples, those are silly examples. Let's do 4 9. Let's do 4 9. Which is simply 0.4 repeating. It has a pattern. And since I have it, let's put it here. 7 11, 7 over 11, which is going to be 0.636363, which can be written as 0.63 repeating. You put the line, you extend your line across both of these things because that's the pattern 636363545454, so on and so forth. So that's the definition of a rational number. The question is what is an irrational number? What is an irrational number. Let's talk about those now, shall we? We are done with this part. I, I'll give you a second and get out of your way. Well, an irrational number is quite straightforward. An irrational number is any number that can not be written as a fraction, it doesn't have a terminating decimal, it doesn't have any repeating pattern, it doesn't have, cannot be, that cannot be written as a fraction, does not have a terminating decimal, it doesn't have any repeating pattern. That's what it is, just the opposite of it, but let me write it properly. Well, what does recapitulate mean? We never talked about it. If you're interested in learning this word properly, most of you already know it, obviously, I realize that because you're a native speaker. But as my 10 year old will tell you, one never knows. One never knows. Recapitulate. We learned it on day number 32. It's an interesting word. Watch the video, not only you will learn the word recapitulate. You will also learn some other interesting words such as capitulate. The word capitulate and recapitulate have nothing to do with each other. If you're interested, as I said, in improving your vocabulary, watch the video, just type in my name Keshwani and then vocabulary words, day 32, and you will see it. So, what is an irrational number? An irrational, irrational number is something. An irrational number is any number, is a, is a number, an irrational number can not, can not be written as fraction. It has, or, or if you're going to say plural, irrational number, since we have singular here, it has no terminating decimal. And it has no repeating pattern of decimal. Now listen carefully, I'm going to say it one more time. Just because, just because it does not end, just because the decimal never ends, that in itself does not make it irrational. That in itself does not make it irrational. A simple example is one third. This clearly is not an irrational number for one very simple reason that we wrote it as a fraction. If you can write it as a fraction, it's not an irra irrational number. If any, no any number that can be written as a fraction is not an irrational number. 
but even though it has 0.3 repeating, 0.3333 repeating, just because it has a non-terminating decimal, listen carefully, just because it has a non-terminating decimal does not make it irrational because even though it is non-terminating, there is clearly a pattern. It's just 3 all the time. So if you have a pattern of 0 0.127, 0 0.1, 0 0.127, 127, 127, 127, forever and ever, that is not an irrational number. That is a rational number because even though it never ends, there is a clear pattern. Irrational numbers are just irrational. There is no rhythm or rhyme to it. They never end. The decimal never ends and you cannot write that as fraction. You cannot express them as one number or the other. The classic example of an irrational number is the classic example of an irrational number is pi, which goes on like this. One four, one five, nine two seven, and on and on. It it is never going to end. It is never going to be end. The value of phi can be not cannot be expressed as one number over the other number, it cannot be expressed as a fraction. When you express it as a decimal, it goes on and on forever. And there are some people, there are some people who sit there and do nothing but memorize the value of pi up to 100 decimal place or 200 decimal place or 1000 decimal place. And in the Guinness book, actually, there's a record of some Japanese guy, I don't know how much he remembered it. Obviously, these people have no lives. I stopped after the 100 digit. That just proves, you see. Anyway, that's, that's a pi. Pi, or rather, that's an irrational number. It cannot be expressed. While we're on the subject of pi, can you tell me what exactly pi is? Very simple question. Very straightforward question. The question is, I'm going to actually put the question somewhere at the prominent place. What is a pi? Just put that in quotation. If you don't know it, when you ask most people what is pi, invariably what you hear is the value of the pi. They will tell you is 3.14. No, I'm not asking you what it equals to. I'm asking you what is it? Can you explain intuitively? Can you provide me an intuitive logical definition of what a pi is? And if all you know is the value of the pi, or if all you have done like most people is to commit the, uh, commit the value of the pi to your memory, and you have no idea if conceptually you cannot articulate it what pi is, then I would recommend that you watch this video again one more time. Anytime you're looking for something, just type in my name, Keshwani, and then type in whatever it is that you're looking for, and something will pop up. Just type in Keshwani and then put this in what is a pi, and you will learn what pi is. While we're talking about something very simple and something very uh, straightforward, here's another notion. What is a triangle. Type it in, search for it, watch that video, you will learn something. Even though it's a very simple thing, obviously everybody knows what a triangle is, or rather everybody thinks that they know what a triangle is, but do you really actually understand intuitively, like pi, do you really understand intuitively what pi is? It's one thing to know the value of the pi, it's another thing to be able to articulate it, what it is. Anyway, enough said. Let me give you one more example of an irrational number, a number that never ends. Pi is one example. Here's another example, root 3. Square root of 3 is 1.73, forever and ever. It's never going to end and it cannot be expressed as a fraction. Square root of 5 is 2.23606, on and on and on. Again, it does not end. The bloody thing will go on forever. These are non-terminating decimals. That's what they're called. In the jargon of the language, in, in the jargon of the mathematics, we call them non-terminating decimals. 
interesting one. Now that I think about it, it's actually not a jargon, it's a pretty straightforward language. Non-terminating, obviously, because it goes on forever and ever. So that's an irrational number. One more time, very quickly, an irrational number is something that definitely cannot be expressed as a fraction. Even if you could express as a fraction, if it doesn't have any repeating pattern, like one-third, it can be expressed as a fraction, it goes on forever, but there's a pattern there. Another characteristic is that you cannot express as a fraction. It has no terminating decimal, it never ends here. And it has no repeating pattern. Just, just because it has no terminating decimal doesn't make it irrational. It can go on forever, but if it has a pattern, then it's not an irrational number. If there is no pattern, here there is no pattern. There is no rhythm or there is, there is no rhythm or rhyme to it. It just goes on in a random fashion forever and ever. That's an irrational number. However, not square not all square roots are irrational, obviously. Perfect squares are quite rational. For example, square root of four, of course, is just two. So not all square roots are irrational, but most of them are. But perfect squares are not, obviously. That's why they're called perfect square. Four is a perfect square. It's called perfect square because it has a square root of two. It just ends right there. There's another one. Square root of nine is three. So not all square roots are irrational, but most of them are. My plan today was to actually do the exercises that you see there on that page, on page 62. We never got around to it because I realized that the video is very long as it is. So we'll, now that we have understood the concept of irrational and rational numbers, we'll do the actual problem tomorrow. Why don't you try this problem on your own? Now that you understand the concept, do these problems that, you, that, that are given there. Practice problem on page 62 before you watch tomorrow's video. Okay? Bye now.